Harlan Krumholtz, professor of medicine from Yale University. And I'm here to talk about emerging science for COVID-19. Today I'm talking about an article, a study that appeared on MedArchive. MedArchive is a preprint server. It's where people put studies prior to peer review. They place it, it's not peer reviewed, and it's available for comment once it's posted. Usually at that time, people are also submitting to peer review. So when people submit to MedArchive, you need to be aware that this has not been fully vetted in the ways that the peer review literature has. But at the same time, it's a means for people to rapidly disseminate science, to be able to share what they're doing, and to give others ideas about what's happening. I'm talking about a study uh, that's called the International Expansion of a Novel SARS-CoV-2 Mutant. Well, this is actually a very interesting study, and, and in part because the questions have been raised about the evolution of the, of the of the virus. That is, is the virus stable? Is it mutating? Is it changing? Uh, might that affect its transmissibility? To what extent can we infer from past experience what it's likely to do in the future? Here in this study, the report is that there's a novel mutation that appears to be spreading worldwide. And what they're telling us, in their opinion, is this deserves close attention. What they did was they studied uh, 95 samples from Sichuan province in China using next generation sequencing in acquiring a whole genome sequences, which were analyzed for sequence variation and evolution against other publicly reported genomes that were out there. And they also were looking at the geographic location and, and uh, provenance of these viruses. And what they found was that there were 10 high frequency mutations that they detected. And a high frequency mutation in their view represented something that was greater than 5%. And then what they did was they did a cluster analysis. They said, well, if we look at these mutations, uh, how, how do they, do they represent sort of, um, you know, different distinct groupings that we can start thinking about as perhaps having a similar consequence? And what they did was they classified them into five main groups based on their analysis. One was the original, uh, original virus, and then four variants well, with different mutation groups that uh, allowed them to do this clustering. Now, interestingly, uh, one of the groups, a group that they labeled group four, contained a novel uh, missense mutation that they was first detected within a Chinese family. And yet, uh, this is the one also that somehow has spread most notably outside of China and is being frequently found outside of the mainland. Uh, the strains uh, that they have been uh, noticing one of them uh, is interacting with the ACE2 receptor. So as you know, this ACE2 receptor is important because this is how the virus is entering into the host. And it's regarded as a critical factor in the transmission and virulence of the, of the virus. So here we're seeing, and they're, what they're describing is that in the uh, part of the genome that is important for uh, encoding this, that uh, is interacting with this receptor is being uh, changed over time. So the other thing that they conclude, and, and this is a letter to the editor, so this is a rather brief report, but they conclude that very little is known about how rapidly uh, the SARS-CoV-2 genome is mutating and how that's affecting transmission severity. Well, what they're introducing in this letter to the editor that is a preprint, this preprint, is the notion that there is some evolution in this virus. It's changing. And those changes could have consequences of making it more highly virulent more highly transmissible, or if we're lucky, it could go in the other direction. But through natural evolution, there, there are changes that are already being able to be detected. There, it is not the exact same virus everywhere in the world. People are being infected by different strains already. And so it's gonna be important to use this to track epidemiologically where this virus is moving, uh, the ways in which it's being transmitted. But also importantly, this is emphasizing why we we can't simply rely on past experience. So we need to learn as much as we can from what's going on in China and is going on throughout the world now. But we need to realize that this is a moving target, that there are things that we need to learn about it uh, in real time. Because as these mutations occur, it may be affecting actually how it is affecting the population. 